Hello everybody and welcome to my channel today. Today we're kicking off a multiple part series within Culinary Boot Camp where we're exploring kitchen staples and flavorings. Everything from herbs and spices to vinegars to coffee to tea. Each week for the next about six weeks or seven weeks or so is going to be dedicated to one of those topics. I thought it would be fun to start this section on herbs in part of my garden, specifically my herb garden. So I guess you know what we're going to be talking about today and it is fresh and dried herbs. So let's get started. The term herb or herb, depending on what part of the world you hail from, refers to a group of aromatic and savory plants whose leaves, stems, and flowers are used in a dried or fresh form to add flavoring to a cooked or uncooked dish. The word herb or herb comes from the Latin word herba, meaning grass, green stalks, or blades. Herbs have a variety of uses, including culinary, medicinal, and even spiritual uses. Use of plants as herbs has been important to all cultures and predates recorded history. In Mesopotamia, the written study of herbs dates back over 5,000 years to the Sumerians, who created clay tablets with lists of hundreds of medicinal plants. The earliest collection of written articles about medicinal herbs and plants is the De Materia Medica, compiled by the Greek surgeon Padamius Dioscorides in approximately 77 BCE. It is considered one of the most influential herbal books. Herbs have been purported in modern days to help with a number of health conditions. And some of those conditions include managing heart disease, cancers, diabetes, reduction in blood clots. Fresh herbs can be infused into things like oil and vinegars. It can be dehydrated or dried. And fresh herbs can even be frozen. So those are the three main ways that you can preserve your herbs past the summer months in order to be able to use them in the winter. Some herbs have a stronger flavor when they're dried, but others have a stronger flavor when they're fresh. Drying herbs tends to alter the flavor and aroma, so fresh is generally preferred and should be used if possible. Dried herbs definitely have a place in the kitchen, especially in areas where it's really difficult to maintain the growth of an herb plant throughout the entire season and are great alternatives for people who cannot afford fresh herbs, which are delicate and have a short shelf life. It is important that you can identify herbs if you plan to use them, because there are some herbs out there that look very similar to poisonous plants. So education about some herbs and how they look is definitely important. If you don't, you might accidentally use a poisonous plant or use an herb in the wrong way. Stored incorrectly, herbs will quickly lose their flavor. All herbs should be used within two to three months of being picked, even if preserved, because they do continue to go through a flavor loss. Additionally, they should definitely be stored away from heat. When purchasing dried herbs in the grocery stores, it is important to make sure that there is no additives added to the herbs which may be preservatives or salt that are not necessarily needed. The good news is many herbs and spices can very easily be grown in your home. This year I am starting herbs from seed, but I also purchase plants from a, a few local sources. So I should have a whole bunch of fresh herbs throughout the summer. When you're planting herbs, you can stagger the growth for about two weeks so that you have a continuous supply of fresh product. If you want to know more about starting plants in general, and this will apply also to herbs, please check out my starting from seedling video. The link is in the description. So right now we're going to go through a list of herbs and it is not a complete list of herbs. And when I 
come across uh, some information about a specific herb that I think is interesting or important to mention, I will mention it. Some of these are the most common and some of these you probably have definitely not heard about. The first one is aloe vera. The second one is basil. And there are two types of basil, sweet and opal. And among those types of basil are 15 types, including Genovesa, which is a common basil, purple, lemon, lime, cinnamon, African and African blue. Basils range from sweet to spicy and mild to strong. So I've got a few types of basil this year. And I've got purple basil and I've got lime basil and I've got some Genovese basil. Basil is a good companion plant for tomatoes and can be grown very near each other. I have some lime basil here that is um, going to seed so when these dry out I will harvest these pods and then I can grow more basil of this type on my own. And this is a plant I bought from a, a local uh, local store. And we have bay leaf and borage. Now, borage sort of holds a special place for me. In culinary school, we were required to do uh, reports on a chosen herb or spice. And I had never heard of borage, so I decided to do my report on borage. So I was able to research it and talk in front of my class about this herb and it is beautiful. I've grown quite a few and this also tends to be kind of an invasive herb so once you plant them you'll end up with them all over the place unless you take precautions to stop them from growing. Borage hails back to Roman times and was used to quote dispel melancholy and induce euphoria. It was grown in the Middle Ages south of Spain by the Arabs. It is believed that it then spread to Europe through their trade with the Arabs and by the 13th century arrived in Denmark. Borage has beautiful blue flowers and tastes slightly of cucumber. They are especially excellent companion plants for tomatoes, squash, and strawberry. They even improve the flavor of tomatoes growing nearby. Borage is rich in minerals, especially potassium. In addition, borage was used for many medicinal purposes, including being steeped into a tonic for the adrenal glands, provided invaluable support for a stressful lifestyle. It has also been used for tea to help reduce fevers and ease chest colds. It's excellently used as a facial steam for improving very dry and sensitive skin. The oil of borage may regulate metabolism and the hormonal system and is considered to be a good remedy for PMS and menopausal symptoms such as hot flashes. Borage infusion promotes the production of milk and can also alleviate and heal colds, bronchitis, and respiratory infections in general. Due to its anti-inflammatory properties, at least that's what is claimed. The flowers may also be dried to add color to potpourri. However, borage does not dry well for culinary use. Culinary uses include using the dried stems for flavoring alcoholic beverages, including the British cocktail Pim's Number One Cup. The prickles or leaf hairs on the stems and leaves quickly dissolve. The flowers are delicious eaten raw in salads, candied and used for cake decorations, or fresh as edible garnishes, especially in cocktails, salads, dips, and cucumber soups, and are beautiful if you freeze them in ice cubes. The blossoms yield a whitish honey with a mild herbal flavor, much appreciated by beekeepers. The leaf stalks are parboiled and fried in batter in Spain and used as an appetizer. So I hope you learned a lot about borage in that one. I'm going to move on to all the other herbs. Chamomile, catnip, chervil, chives, and chives are closely related to onions, garlic, shallots, leeks, and scallions. In addition to common chives, there are three additional types of chives, and they include garlic chives, giant Serbian chives, and Serbian garlic chives. The next herb is called Sicily, and some other common names for Sicily is Sweet Sicily, Myrrh, Garden Myrrh, and Sweet Chervil. Next we have Cilantro. 
a real love-hate opinion in the world about cilantro. To a portion of the population, cilantro tastes like soap, and that is actually due to genetics. When I was younger, it actually tasted like soap to me, but I have developed a taste for it over the years, and now I really, really love it. Cilantro is also known as coriander. Cilantro refers to the leaves of the cilantro plant, the leaves and the stems. It's an herb. And the seeds, which are a spice, which we'll cover next week, because spices are the roots and the seeds and the bark of a plant. The seeds of a cilantro plant are known as coriander and ground and used in many dishes. Coriander seeds do not taste like the leaves. Completely different flavors. Curry leaves, dill, epizote, and I'm not exactly sure if I pronounced that right. This is a very important culinary herb in traditional Mexican dishes, including tamales, salsa, black beans, enchiladas, and mole. Next we have fennel and lavender, lemon balm, lemongrass, and lemon verbena, lovage, marjoram, mint, and did you know there are between 13 and 24 varieties of mint? And they include peppermint, spearmint, ginger mint, chocolate mint, orange mint, lavender mint, grapefruit mint, and cat mint. And cat's mint is related to, but is not the same as catnip. Here we have some of my mint plants. This year I went with peppermint and chocolate mint, and I swear I have some spearmint around here somewhere. But they are so good. And because I like to make my own ice cream in the summer, what's great is you can take chocolate mint leaves and you infuse the uh, cream that you're gonna use to make the ice cream with the mint leaves, and then you have a delicious, natural, chocolate mint flavored ice cream. I also do this kind of thing with like lemon verbena, which makes a great lemony ice cream. One of the great things you can do with herbs is definitely use them to make flavored ice cream. Mm. Next we have myrtle, anastertium, oregano, parsley, both of the curly and Italian varieties, rosemary, and there are a number of different types of rosemary out there. Most commonly you get in a grocery store is just going to be one variety. That's why, again, it's great to grow your own because you can grow anything that you can get a seed from. Some varieties of rosemary include Arp, Tuscan Blue, Barbecue, Roman Beauty, and Tarantius. And then we move on to sage, and there are 900 varieties of sage. Not all of them are edible, however. But if you can get your hands on a number of the varieties, they probably are edible because no one's going to be selling inedible sage. Salad burnet, savory, both summer and winter, scented geranium, sorrel, or French sorrel, which is used in mixed salads, sauces, soups, cheese dishes, and pork and fish dishes. Due to the high acidity level found in sorrel, cooking with it may discolor some metallic pots. Then we have tarragon, of which there are three varieties, French, Russian, and Mexican, and thyme, which there are 35 types of. And I do believe that that is all I have today on herbs. There could be a, like a video dedicated to every single herb and you could go and look on uh, you, YouTube and search Google to find out more information. If you would like me to do a video on any number of the herbs I mentioned today, please leave the name of that herb in the comment section below and I will see what I can do. I hope you enjoyed this video today. Come back next week when I cover spices and the following week when I cover edible flowers. Better yet, please subscribe to my channel so you see when all the new content comes out. I hope you found the information I provided today useful and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're having a great summer. And as always, have a wonderful day.